can our darker emotions cause us to take actions that are not pure? Uh, always. <laughs> yes, always. Your darker emotions will cause you to take actions that are not pure all the time. Because it's, so it's not a can, it's yes, it will always happen. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because the soul is dominant. This is the principle of dominance. So when we look at how the human soul functions, whatever is in the soul emotionally will dominate our everyday existence. So if we have darker emotions in our soul and, you know, emotions where we'd like to harm people, or emotions of rage and anger, which that all comes from, or emotions of rebellion, which cause us to get into trouble a lot, or emotions driven by fears that, yeah. that we're trying to uh, allay by using addictions, all of those types of emotions will definitely dominate. Mm -hmm. So therefore, every single day, they will dominate you. So you can think you're suppressing them, but your actions and your words and your behaviour will be d driven by them. And it will only be a supreme exercise of will that prevents you from acting them out. Yeah. And uh, you won't be able to do it all the time. When you're put under strain or under pressure, you'll revert back to the dominance of the soul. So the soul and its emotions will dominate every single moment of your existence. So if your soul is full of dark emotions, they are going to dominate every day of your existence unless you exercise a supreme, some supreme control of your will. And even then, given certain circumstances, you'll revert back to your old behaviour. Uh -huh. So you need to give up the concept that you can somehow bury your dark emotions and they have no effect on your life because it's not true. They have an effect on your every single day-to-day -day life, every single moment of the day. And isn't it true that the more we suppress our emotions, the more they dominate, mm -hmm. our darker emotions, the more they dominate what we do? Correct. This is why, you know, a lot of religious faiths have this feeling of guilt. You know, they, they teach you that you should do, you know, these commandments, and every single person at some point can't do the, these commandments because of the dominance of their soul. Yep. And so they you know, go ahead and they break one of the commandments. And then, of course, there's huge amounts of guilt associated with the breaking of one of the commandments. And so then you, you, know, you punish yourself for the breaking of a commandment. But that doesn't change anything either. So, so because your soul's dominant, you can punish yourself as much as you want, but you'll still go ahead and do it next time. And this is why, like a lot of religious faiths, for example, have this issue with masturbation, like particularly Christian religious faiths. And they're saying, you know, the man, or, and usually it's referred to as a male that's got a problem with it, you know, needs to get it under control, this habitual masturbation is bad for him and all these kind of things, right? They don't have any real reason why this is the case, of course, um, but they do feel that it's somehow immoral. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they, they feel you, you've got to get control of yourself, you know, you've got to control the fact that you want to do this. And the problem with that kind of reasoning is that it causes a person to believe that eventually they can control their soul with their mind yeah. and they can't yeah. and sooner or later they will relapse to their old behaviour and, and then of course because they're being told that it's all about control they then feel guilty that they can't control. Mm -hmm. They would be far better off trying to find the causal emotional reason why they relapse into such behaviours. So habitual masturbation for example is driven by a large amount of sa sadness about intimacy and, and sadness in the relationship with the opposite sex. So, so what the person would need to do is feel some of that sadness. Mm -hmm. When they feel some of that sadness, the feeling will dissipate and then they'll feel less drawn to habitual masturbation and masturbation would just be a, a, more of a, a sexual uh, enjoyment rather than something that's habitual, driven by a need or an addiction of some kind. Yeah. And, and and so in this, and I'm not saying in this discussion, obviously, that masturbation is wrong because the reality is if you're not allowed to touch yourself, then I would suggest nobody is. <laughs> and nobody so else is able to touch you either. No, that's right. Why should somebody else be able to touch you when you can't? But um, the reality, though, is that there are many people who are addicted to it in order to avoid some of these emotions, and they would be far better off finding the emotion than they would trying to control the habit using their intellect. Yeah. You know, once you deal with the emotion and release it, you're not driven by the emotion anymore. And so now you have full control of your choices and decisions. So if we use that example, um, you're speaking of a sad, so a sadness about intimacy, for example, mm -hmm. can drive the habit of 
masturbation, habitual masturbation, if you like. Yes. And well, can I make it even more plain? In the even if the man is in a relationship, the majority of women do not give their hearts or, or give themselves sexually in a relationship. As a result, the man feels quite sad about this. So he's, he's sad that he's not feeling the flow of sexual feelings from the woman to himself. As a result, he's going to be driven to masturbation if he does not feel the sadness that he feels about that. Does it make sense? Yes. Now, when he doesn't feel the sadness of that, he will feel like he has to masturbate in order to feel at least some kind of pleasure and somebody sort of a feeling that something or somebody wants him type of feeling, even if it's him, he himself. Yeah. Um, and this is what drives his ha habit. Mm -hmm. Now, in a relationship, if this man's in a relationship, there's quite a few things he needs to address. Firstly, he needs to address the woman's reluctance to share her heart or her sexual uh, feelings with him. He also needs to address the fact that he, he needs that to survive. So he needs to feel about why he needs that to survive, what sadness within him causes him to need that to survive. And they are the causal emotions he actually needs to access. And so he might be afraid of addressing those things with the woman. He might be afraid of the woman and upsetting her and she goes completely and then he has no sex at all. He might be afraid of a number of different things that cause him to, to feel that masturbation is the way out of the situation and rather than discussion with his, his girl, you know, the, in the case of what we're suggesting here with, with his partner, um, he needs to work his way through those emotional issues. Now, it's the denial of those emotional issues that create the habit, mm -hmm. the addiction. And we need to understand that. It's the denial of it. And it's not... It's not because somebody has la lost control, they have no control because they are driven by their addiction. Yeah. Right? And, that, and all, uh, pretty much all of our addictions are emotional and then we have a few physical ones. Yeah. So, you, you know, most people think it's the other way around, but it's not. It's that you have a few physical addictions, all driven by these large numbers of emotional addictions mm -hmm. that once, once you work your way through, you no longer have the physical addiction either. They mm -hmm. automatically dissipate. So clarifying what you're saying is that um, the question was, can our darker emotions cause us to take actions that are not pure? Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's the suppression of our darker emotions that actually drive us to take actions that are not pure. And yes. when we allow our darker emotions, we no longer feel driven to, to avoid them. I suppose it's a, it depends on how you allow them. Like, sure. if you allow them from the point of view of experiencing them within yourself without taking them out on anyone else, mm -hmm. then yes, they haven't caused you to cause any problems for anybody else and there will be a release inside of you. But the majority of people don't do that. The major what the majority of people do is they suppress them or they allow them to actually have full reign over the, or however they, how they treat other people. Now, of course, that's going to even further darken the soul and that is suppression and resistance to those dark emotions. Mm. So when I say dark emotions will always cause you to do dark things, that is always true, right, because of the dominance of the soul. You will always do dark things if you have dark emotions in them, inside of you. If you suppress them, you will even do worse things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does yep. that make sense? Yeah. Um, now, you, you have a choice. Do you suppress and resist or do you feel them? Now, the majority of people choose to not feel them because they feel painful to feel. And what they choose to do is try to suppress them and resist them. In trying to suppress them and resist them, generally you will do even darker things. Mm. And this is how people who believe in love murder other people. Yeah. This is how, you know, women who believe in love, you know, kill an unborn child. Yeah. This is how, you know, it's all done through the darker emotions that exist within the soul, ge generating within the person thoughts that justify their behaviour. Yeah. So the darker emotions will always finish up doing that. They'll always generate thoughts that finish up justifying more unloving behaviour. Mm. And you can't avoid that because the soul is dominant. Yeah. What you can do is you can work on that happening. Why does it happen? You can get to the soul-based emotional reason why it's happening and release it, and then you can change. Yeah. But, but you, a force of will is not going to change you. You have to use extreme will, and even then, put yourself in a difficult situation. You will do what the dark emotions dictate. So, for example, for a woman who normally believes that she loves children, she becomes pregnant 
from a one night stand with a man that she hates, right, and that somehow she got into a, mm -hmm. a sexual uh, interaction with, and, and now she's pregnant. What does she do? Well, most of the time that woman wouldn't hesitate to take a morning after pill if it was available to her, or further than that, if she does become pregnant, abort the child. Mm. Now, in that way, the woman has become a murderess. Mm. But she's willing to justify the murderess by saying, oh, but I don't want the child, and the ch it's not good to bring the child in the world. It would be, the child would be happier in the spirit, you know, in the afterlife, it would be happier without me. You know, or, or they believe that the child hasn't even incarnated yet. You know, it's not a child yet until it's born. There's all sorts of justifications we make, all of which internally, most of the time, we know are false. Yeah. But we take them because the dark emotion generates those thoughts. Mm -hmm. So we, we, the dark emotion will always, always dominate in the end. And given the situation, it will always exert its power. Mm. And this is what we need to do, is we need to start looking at those dark emotions and let them go emotionally. We need to process them, experience them, feel them so that they release from us. Now there is no opportunity for them to control because they're no longer in us. Mm. Mm. It's funny, isn't it? Because almost everyone on the planet is trying to hide their darker emotions a lot of times for fear of what they might do mm -hmm. if, they, uh, if they acknowledge those emotions. Mm -hmm. And yet from what you're saying, the more they're suppressed, the more dominant, the, or the yeah. more driven everyone is to keep them suppressed and so they do justify more and more acts. Yes, and eventually they do impure. take actions. Or they have to do the other thing, which is completely suppress every feeling in their soul, which mm. is very damaging to yourself. So eventually they do one of those two things. If the dark emotion exists in the soul and you never release it, you carry it around like a burden, right? Sooner or later in a situation that will come up and dominate, or if you're very, very, very good at suppression, which most people on the earth are fairly good at because we've had lots of training. <laughs> we had training from the moment we were, we were conceived right the way through our entire childhood, right the way into our adulthood. We've had training about how to suppress and society is great at enforcing suppression. Because of that, we go, right, I'm going to suppress this. I'm going to suppress Like, I feel like cheating on my husband, but I'm going to suppress it. And then we come up with all these concepts and ideas. Uh, it doesn't matter where you get your, your sexual desires from as long as you go home and you have sex with your husband, you know. Yeah. So it's okay if you watch a bit of porn, it's okay if you watch that guy walk down the street and all that kind of, as long as you go home and have sex with your husband, that's all fine, you know. And, and there's all these justifications, but let's see, this is the darkness of the soul dominating and we then use our intellect to try, the, the soul uses its intellect to try and justify the soul's condition. Yeah. And this is always going to happen. Mm. And then what you do is you suppress that or attempt to. So you try, try hard, you know, you, you pray to God, you know, saying, help me overcome this evil desire and all these kind of things. And God's saying, well, the only way you're going to overcome this evil desire is to feel the evil desire and its cause. Yes. What, why do you feel like doing that? And you'll trace that back to some childhood events and so forth. And once those things are released, you'll never feel like that again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's fantastic knowing that because you can be confident about that anything that might be judged by yourself as evil inside of yourself can always be changed as long as you find the causal emotion yeah. that causes it. And, that's, uh, and this is the only action we can take with our so-called dark emotions. Yeah. Great. Thank mm. you. Mm.